So I got the chance to see Rock of Ages not too long ago. I thought about you guys know what they thought about it. So Rock of Ages is the new movie directed by Adam Shankman. He previously directed the movie Hairspray, which was a great musical, wonderful movie, I loved it and lost. And now he's adapting another hit Broadway musical into the movie. And Rock of Ages is a jukebox musical featuring hit hair metal rock songs from the 1980s. Now, the story involves uh, two main characters. And, uh, one is Sherry, she's played by Julianne Huff from Dancing with the Stars from the Footloose remake. She's a small town girl moving to Los Angeles to try to make it big as a singer. And then there's Drew, a uh, up and coming rocker who's working at this a famous rock rock bar, and the two of them meet and fall in love. And the fact that every, basically every plot point in this movie is one massive cliche after another, you know, you can see just like everything coming a mile away. But in some ways, it's actually pretty clever just how they wrote the cliches. Like, for instance, this movie combines the story between these two lovebirds, like two of the most beloved of all show is romance cliches, you know. First, it starts out with a boy meets girl, boy and girl fall in love, but then simultaneously it combines the, uh, uh, they break apart because one of them hits the spotlight and forget, seems to forget the other, and they, and they break up because of a romantic misunderstanding. Now, the fact that both movies happen at the same time, and both are based on misunderstandings, meaning that neither character is really at fault, is actually kind of clever in the, the way of, you know, that, that like, ma mashing these ancient cliches together to make it work in the story. But, of course, I'm pretty sure nobody's watching this review to feel what I think about, you know, the, the two main characters and the big story of this musical. The big question I think you all want me to answer is, can Tom Cruise sing? The answer to that is a resounding yes. Uh, Tom Cruise, of course, plays a rocker named Stacy Jackson in this movie. He's really good in here, and he can sing really well. He has a a few great music numbers when you think like Dead or Wanted Dead or Alive by Bon Jovi and I Wanna Feel Like and I Wanna Know What Love Is. And but you might actually be surprised by how comparatively little screen time he has compared to some compared to the main characters. I mean, you know, all the advertising and all the publicity has been focused around Tom Cruise and how he, how good he might be able to sing. But you know, you can say what you want about Tom Cruise, you know, his his sanity and whatever. But the guy's are an extremely dedicated actor. I mean, if he wants to have an action sequence on the world's tallest building in Mission Impossible, so it's, he'll climb up the world's tallest building for Mission Impossible. And he, and he wants to play a rock star in Rock of Ages. He will train and train until he can just sing, sing his heart out. I mean, truly just have the time of his life. And he just throws himself into this role like no other actor could. And he's just really fantastic here as Stacey Jacks. Now, the supporting cast is really where this movie kind of shines, because the leads, as good as they are in the roles, you know, Diego Boneta, who plays Drew, I think it's been, is considered particularly good. Yeah, we, we know with the singing and rocking and all that, but really, they're just so, so familiar, so cliched that you really kind of gravitate towards the supporting characters. Some of the supporting characters we see are played by like Paul Giamatti, and uh, he plays a Stacey Jackson manager to become, who also tries to draw in uh, Drew after he makes it big. We have Captain Zeta Jones as the crusading life of the mayor who's trying to wipe out rock and roll in Los Angeles. The mayor's played by Brian Cranston in a, in a disappointingly small role. I don't even think I even was able to hear him sing any, which is really kind of disappointing. I really wanted to hear Brian Cranston sing. And we also have characters played by Mary J. Bilge. She owns a strip club that the Julianne Huff character, Sherry, starts to start to work at. And we also have Malin Ackerman, who was, you know, so mediocre in movies like Watchmen. She plays a Rolling Stone reporter who comes to profile Stacey Jackson and ends up sleeping with them. Uh, I was surprised with how well she was able to sing, but aside from that, she really didn't do a whole, whole lot for me. But, and also, of course, we have Alex Baldwin and Russell Brand as two of the owners of the bar where Drew works at. I mean, they're hilarious at completely. And, uh, yes, all these guys can sing. Of course, we knew some of them could sing before, you know, guys like Russell Brand and Paul Giamatti, Mary J. Bild, Alex Baldwin. We knew these guys could sing right away. But seeing guys like Tom, Tom Cruise just belt out this music is really part of the fun, I mean. I guess really, 
how much you will enjoy this movie is really based on how much you enjoy 80s metal. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of 80s metal myself, but I liked all of the 80s songs that they had in this movie. They chose the music very wisely, I think. All these are like golden oldies, you know, from you know, Wanted Dead or Alive and I Want to Rock to I Love Rock and Roll and Don't Stop Believing. All these things are, are very good songs and very well performed by the cast, I thought. And once you get past the fact that, the, that every single part of this movie is an ancient and blat blatantly obvious cliche, I mean, you can see the entire plot coming a mile away. Once you get past that fact, you can just really just sit back and enjoy the music, enjoy the performances. The actors are clearly having the time of their lives here. There's not one moment where the actors don't seem to be having fun. And you just kind of appreciate the craft of the dance sequences, of the blips and glamour of the set. I mean, you really feel like you were tough back in 1987. And sometimes too much of it just gets so excessive at times. But not as excessive as I expected. That was actually my major fear in this movie. Just thought that everything just gets so over the top. But really, it, it doesn't. But just if you like, if you like just you know cheesy, uh, cheesy 80s filled musical with lots of your favorite songs and lots of talented actors just blast, blasting their hearts out into this music, you'll really enjoy Rock of Ages. I think it, it's not a movie for everybody. I really liked it, and I, I would certainly watch it again, I think.